Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now, as you guys know, I do use and review quite a few Android TV boxes and to be honest, sometimes it gets a bit boring when there's nothing new to the table. But it's always exciting to see Minix releasing a new Android TV box and I'm sure that uh, there are some of you out there uh, that have the same feeling as I do, especially because usually they make great Android TV boxes. Now, that being said, a few months ago we saw the U1, which is is one of my favorite Android TV boxes, uh, still is at this moment, and now they have released the U9H, which we are going to take a look today. Nonetheless, I do have my own personal opinion regarding these two models, where they stand out, and a few things more that I would like to share, but in another video, because I want to keep this one as short as possible, and this one is honestly about the U9H. That being said, guys, let's go straight for the video, hope that you enjoy it, and as always, I'll see you in a few seconds. And here we are with the latest Minix Android TV box, the Minix Neo U9H that features the S912 SOC, 2GB of DDR3 RAM and 16GB of flash storage with Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. And moving to our usual and quick unboxing experience, inside the package we will find the Minix new U9H, an external antenna with an SMA connection, USB to micro USB cable, HDMI cable, female USB to micro USB, a power adapter, infrared remote control and a quick user guide. And those that follow the channel know that I am a Minix fan and the reason is simply because they have produced some of the best machines that I've used so far with pure Android. The X8H Plus was one of the best devices when it came out roughly two years ago, then we saw the Z64, U1 and now the U9H, which in my opinion is the direct replacement of the X8H Plus. And also on a side note, for those running the X8H Plus, the U9H H will be a great improvement, but for someone using a U1, unless you need 4K HDR, Dolby HD audio pass through, and other nice improvements, but for most people won't matter. Then, regarding raw performance, we won't see much difference between the U9H and the U1. And talking about the U1, the enclosure of the U9H is exactly the same with the same ports and actually I can only tell one from another when looking to the serial at the bottom of the case. So for those that have seen my review on the U1 already know the ports but for those that didn't then here we go. The U9H at the front has the IR receiver along with the LED that turns blue when the box is on and green when on standby. On the right hand side one power button, three USB 2.0 ports, micro SD card slot, micro USB OT connection and a Kessington lock. On the left hand side the external antenna, at the back a 3.5 headphone jack, microphone input, HDMI 2.0, optical out, gigabit ethernet connection and a power input jack. At the bottom four rubber feet and at the top that Minix logo. And turning the U9 on will show us the Minix Metro UI launcher uh, that we all know, but there's also a clean launcher which is the style that I personally prefer and of course we can install any other launcher of our choice. And also to note that as usual Minix has online updates on the U9 which at this moment is running the latest firmware version. And now moving to our usual benchmark so that we can uh, do some comparison comparisons and starting with the network speed test over Wi-Fi, we could get 170 megabits per second on download and 10 on upload. And on the Ethernet connection, 200 megabits per second on download and 20 on upload, which is the maximum of my actual connection. Next on the disk speed test, we got uh, faster read speeds than the U1 and slower writes, uh, but nonetheless, the only box that I've seen and used with higher speeds was the NVD Shield. Then the rest of the benchmarks all show uh, superior values to the U1, but in a real world usage we won't notice it. 
and the included remote it's a very well known infrared remote control and it might be fine for the basic usage uh, especially for those that will use the metro ui launcher developed by minix but i always advise on getting a wireless remote even the cheapest one will be better than any infrared as i showed on the remote video comparison that i shared a while ago and i'll try not to forget to post the link on the youtube cards above now on the screen the wireless remote that you guys see is the new minix a3 and i will be sharing a video showing what we can do with it but the main point is that my experience in apps such as netflix browse Housing and so on is totally different. And in terms of Netflix, Minix devices can only play with SD resolution of 480, but it came to my attention that there is an app version that it's capable of playing in a higher resolution. And although I can't say if it's 720 or 1080, which is hard to tell, one thing is for sure, the quality is much higher than the 480 that the regular app plays. And the YouTube app pre-installed is the TV version and the maximum resolution that I was able to play was 1080. And moving to Kodi, the U9H comes with a version 17.1 Krypton and all the results were great as I was expecting. I was able to stream from my network my 1080 Blu-ray movies and also the test samples H264 and H265 8-bit movies such as Big Buck Bunny, Tears of Steel and Sintel up to 4K and also 10-bit H265 4K samples such as Dive into the New World and Iceland and we had in the past a great experience with the U1 so I wasn't expecting any less from the U9H and as you guys could see on the screen everything was really smooth. And in terms of gaming on the Android platform, as far as I'm aware, there isn't a game that won't run on the AM Logic S905 and S912 SOC. So, once again, here, no surprises uh, in the results playing Raymond Adventures, Asphalt 8 Airborne, and Real Racing 3. And by the way, guys, don't forget to check out one of my latest video comparisons on gamepads for the Android TV boxes, and I'll post a link right above on the YouTube cards. And still on the gaming department, and for those like myself that enjoy playing PC games on the TV through game streaming, then yeah, the U1 was more than capable and so is the U9H. I did play Rocket League, Gas Guzzlers and Creed Auto Sports with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, streamed by my Windows computer with a GTX 960 connected on my network. Now for those that aren't familiar with game streaming, I also published a video a few months ago and now I'll try and not forget once again to post the link right above. And finally, Minix includes a premium app called Airpin Pro, which is one of my favorite apps that I've been using since the X8H Plus, and it's what I use to mirror iOS and OS X to our Android TV boxes. Now, in terms of the experience, once again, both image and audio played smoothly on my tests uh, using the live slideshows from the Photos app, like magazine style, sliding panels, and vintage prints. So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most on the Minix new U9H were the simple design as usual and the build quality, the frequent online updates and we can have the U1 for example that has already released 11 firmware updates since it was released, some great Wi-Fi and Ethernet speeds, a smooth video playback in all the formats that I've tested and finally capable of game streaming at 1080 with 60 frames per second. On the other hand guys, things that I did like the least for my type of usage, I wasn't able to find anything that uh, turned my experience in a bad way, so the list is empty. And that is it, we have reached the end of another one, hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up, my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one.